In this video, I'm going to go over some of the basics of NX. So let you start it. It'll take a minute to load. Now, this is the student version. So it looks pretty much like the full-blown version, except it um, does not have a lot of the features. If you want to go through here and look through here, it's a really nice little simple explanation about some of the basics. And you can follow through and maybe pick up a couple of things. It's not a bad idea. Kind of introduce yourself to the software because it is quite a bit different. Let's go to new. Now, in the textbook, in the NX textbook, I think all of the assignments are in millimeters. So we'll be doing a lot of drawings in millimeters. Uh, you want to always check when you're starting. So as far as beginning, you should come to this screen. Not going to start with a drawing just like we've done with inventor and like with solidworks you always start with a model so we want to be in the model tab and you want to see what the unit is you want to set that up front not after you've started drawing um, so we'll set that for millimeters for right now and if you want to go ahead and give the file a name before you start it's not a bad idea and you can see all the things that the software is capable of doing it's a very powerful powerful piece of software um, but it's not quite as user friendly as like SOLIDWORKS, so there is definitely going to be a learning curve there. So we're, anyway, we're good to go. Say OK. And the screen will pop up. If your uh, menus aren't staying when you click on these, if the menus like go on and off, flash on and off, come over here up to the upper right hand corner and when I started my first my computer up at first, the menu wouldn't stay on. So if you just click on that little thing, then your whatever menu you choose will stay on. So typically you're going to be working in this home model. I, other than assemblies, I don't use many of these. Uh, <clears throat> now, one thing about in, uh, NX is all of your files will be saved under one name. So the model, the drawing, if you were to do finite element, if you create the cam information for this part it would all be in one file and so what you'll do is you just go over here oops to application here's all the applications you can have in this one file right now we're modeling you can do sheet metal drafting which is your drawings added in manufacturing so you can work with your 3d uh, 3d printed parts stl files you can do electrical parts mechanical parts etc there's more features you can have in here if you if you have the commercial version so right now we're in the modeling mode uh, over here as far this is the part navigator because i'm making a model it's going to be a prt file so for a part file you should see this so see this here that's the part navigator this is the assembly navigator when you're working on assemblies so you want to make sure you're in the part navigator you're going to have a part tree just like we've seen with solidworks and with inventor so in order to start, now you're going to have this XYZ icon here, which is really helpful for moving around. I'll show you. And these are our origin. It's our origin that we're going to work from and our origin plane. So let's start with a sketch. This menu is going to pop up. Now in NX, when something's blue, it means you need to give it some information. Now, when these menus pop up, if you go in here and start changing all these things without knowing what you're doing, you're going to have a crazy mess on your hand. So don't just change stuff randomly. Uh, what, what it's asking you for is which plane do you want to start your sketch on? And you should be familiar with that. That's the same process we've used with Inventor, same process we've used with SOLIDWORKS. So all you got to do is bring your cursor over here and move it. I'm not clicking. I'm just putting my cursor on these. And that'll identify the planes. And let's just choose that one. And then you have to say OK. And that's going to be my origin. And I'm on my YZ plane like that. OK, so this tool is going to pop up. Uh, you can draw with profile, which is the way you want to draw, because those lines and arcs will be connected. So it'll be like a continuous line. If you draw with lines, each line you'll have to start and stop, start and stop each line. So typically, you would just leave that profile tool on there if I want to do something simple. Um, this is not quite as user friendly, I think, working about the origin. So what I usually do is just put one of my corners on the origin. And let's just make like something simple. So I'll do a box. So I'm going to do 80. If I hit enter, it'll show me the angle. If I want it to be horizontal, just hit enter again. And I 
could zoom in here. I'll go up vertically and I'll make that one 60. Enter twice because you got to do the length and the angle. Now you notice it's automatically putting the dimensions on, which is kind of good and bad. I'll go left 80 and turn enter and come back down to my origin. Enter enter. Hit escape twice and now you see it's gray and if you look down at the bottom it says the sketch contains over constrained geometry it's got too many dimensions and that's because this there's an 80 and an 80 and i don't need both of those so just delete one of those and it'll turn black black means it's fully constrained and let's say i want to put a hole in that so now i'm still in my sketch mode you can see that flag if you see that flag it means you're in the sketch mode and when you want to finish your sketch you would hit that flag so let's put a circle or put a hole in this so if i move my cursor over there i can find the midpoint of that line and if i move it up there i can find that midpoint and that it'll let me have both midpoints if i want to do that so that's kind of handy so then i can just click it and then i want to type in that diameter let's say that's 25 enter and hit escape now again notice it notice it put the dimensions on there Right? And because I was very selective about where I put that center point, those dimensions are correct. Everything's black, so it's fully constrained. If I want to change that, just double click it. See right there, it shows up as 30. If I wanted to make that 35, for example. So what it'll do is each dimension, it'll give it a P number. The first dimension is P1, P2, P3, et cetera. So that's if you wanted to create a formula that said like P1 equals P2, and if you change one, the size of one feature the other one would also change along with that so that move that if i want to undo i can come up here and undo and i can also redo so those tools are up there my trim tool is here it works a lot like solidworks my extend tool here's my dimensioning tools if i need to put a dimension now typically you don't have to because the software will put dimensions on as you create the part but if you need to you can use this rapid dimension tool and if you click on this arrow you can force like linear or angles or radius dimensions and so forth here's your constraints if you need to add like a horizontal or a vertical this box will always pop up it'll get let you choose a line and say i want to make it a vertical or a horizontal or tangent or something like that so that's just right there. Uh, let's see what else. I can fill it here. That's right there. If I want to fill it, I would just put in the radius. Uh, let's make it a five and then click on the two lines. So just like we've seen with our other modeling software, you can either put a fillet on the sketch or you can put a fillet on the model. And I think I'm good to go. So I'm happy with that. Let's finish that. There's my sketch. Now you'll notice this always comes along for the ride, that data marker. Uh, it's kind of annoying. If you don't turn it off at some point, it will actually put it on your drawing sheet. So to, usually what I do, unless I need it, now if you're gonna add some work planes or something, you may need that. Just right click and then hide that. Okay, let's go up here to sketch. Uh, I'm sorry, to extrude. And now this yellow is highlighted because it's saying select the curve, basically select the body and now there's a lot of stuff here so focus for just a minute now if you wanted to change a direction you'd click on that thing and it would go that way um, i don't use a lot of these but you can move it in different directions and so forth but basically select the curve uh, choose a direction now you can do an offset from that point if you want by just saying okay let's offset where the beginning of that extrusion is by 10 millimeters so from that original sketch it'll bump it over that's not something I, I use very often a lot of times that would be if you're adding features um, to an existing part and you have a plane to work with let's see so I got to start over select that um, the end value that's what I'm saying right now I want to extrude a certain value or you can do symmetrical around the midpoint until it hits another point another surface or so forth um, I'm going to do it symmetrical I'll make it 30. Now the Boolean would be whether it's a solid or a negative part. Uh, because I only have one sketch, I only have one option. And let's say OK. And there is my part. Now you notice the sketch shows up over here. If you double click on that, it will take you back to the sketch. So then I could edit it if I want or make a change, add a feature, finish that again. 
Uh, I don't want to see that sketch. Sometimes it's helpful. Usually it's just in the way. So again, right click and hide the sketch. And there is my part. Okay. Um, if you wanted to do a fillet on this thing, you just go up here where it says edge blend. So here's a chamfer. That's pretty obvious. Edge blend means it's a fillet. There's lots of different variations of blends in NX, so that's why they don't call it a fillet. So then here you'd put, put in what your fillet radius is going to be, and then just click on the corners, the corner or corners, and say, okay, and I'll add the fillets to that. Let's see, as far as your mouse, the center obviously zooms in and out. If you hold down the middle button, that'll let you move it back and forth. If you hold down control and the middle button, you can zoom in and out. If you hold down shift in the middle, you can pan it. So the key, the controls are a little bit different than say NX or, or I'm sorry, SOLIDWORKS or Inventor. You just uh, have to get used to that. Uh, when I'm switching back and forth to software, sometimes I'm a little clunky and I'm jumping around until I remember which uh, commands to use. So there's my part. If I wanted to make another feature on there, I would just just like we've seen before, I'd go to sketch, click on the surface, say OK. And let's say I'm going to put a round hole in here. And let's see, again, the dimensions are on there. If I'm happy with those. Now, that's a weird <clears throat> dimension. Now, this is an ISO dimension. So another thing about this student version is you you can only use ISO dimension styles. You can't change it to uh, ANSI. So they're kind of ugly, but that's ISO style. I, just, I don't like ISO style that much, but that's what we got to live with. So that's 12.6 because comma is equal to a decimal point in an ISO system. Uh, let's see. Let's say I don't like that dimension. It's off of a weird place. I can go up here to rapid dimension, put my own dimension on there. Let's say that's supposed to be 55, and then that'll override that dimension that came along with it. Okay, so if I'm good with that, then finish it, go to extrude. Now, unlike SOLIDWORKS, there's a single extrude, whether it be a positive or negative, you don't have an extrude cut tool. So now here's where you have to decide what you want it to be. Inferred means the software is going to make an assumption, and it thinks that you want a positive. What I want is a negative, so I'm going to subtract, but you see the arrow is going up. If you say, okay, it's going to give you an error. What you have to do is go up here where it says direction. Now there's a lot of those little goofy things around here, but it's this one here. It'll flip the direction. Uh, now, how far do I want it to go? Oops, wrong thing. Go up here and say through all, for example. Say okay. And there we go. Oop, looks like that hole hit the other one. That's okay. <clears throat> And again, I'm going to turn that sketch off, just hide it. And there's my part. Let's save that. So I'll do a save as. Make sure you know. Make sure you know where you're putting that thing. Let's see. Just give it some kind of a name so I know what the heck it is. And it's going to save it as a PRT file, part file. Now to make a drawing, remember what I said earlier, when you make a drawing, you don't do a new file. You just go up to application, pick drafting, and this is going to pop up because it's on an ISO system. It's going to have metric paper sizes. So you have A1, A2, A3, A4. Um, and these are actually backwards. Like A4 is a big piece of paper. A1 is small. A B size is like an A3, so that's what I want you to use is an A3 piece of paper, right? And just say, okay, now the paper is going to pop up. This will pop up. If you want to fill out these parts of the title block over here, you would do that. I'm not going to worry about that right now. I'll close that. Now, here's where you could, if this was not the student version, you could specify your drafting standard, but you just get this error because it doesn't give you that option, right? You can see you don't have any, you're just stuck with ISO, so that's what we get. That's fine. We'll just we'll just work with that. Remember, it is the student version. You can't change the drafting standard. You can't print with this. You can't create a PDF. 
Um, there's a couple other things I've found that you're not able to do, um, but that's fine because we're just going to use it to learn. We're not a company. If you're a company, you'd buy the software. I think the software is about $10,000 for the stripped down version. Uh, okay, so now the way that you want to make your views is by using this thing called the view creation wizard. If you don't have that, you need to turn it on. You can bumble through this and try to do it with this base view. And if what you flip through, but it's very cumbersome because what it's going to do is it won't put an ISO view. It'll put an auxiliary view over here. It's not how to do it. You can get there, but it's very clunky. If your view creation wizard is not on, over here where it says update the views, click on this little arrow under here. And make sure you put a check mark by view creation wizard. And once you do that, I think it'll stay on every time you load this once you start it. So definitely want to do that. Okay, if we click on view creation wizard. Now we're going to see this menu is kind of a bunch. Now you're going to see this come up. And let's see, click on the file you want. And let's pay attention to our views. So what you can do here should not have screwed the whole thing. Let's start over. So that's just gonna just gonna pick the the file that you're gonna have, and then you don't do finish. Click next. And here are a couple of things that you can do. Uh, one thing you have to turn on. The hidden lines. See how it shows hidden lines as being invisible? You don't want those to be invisible. You have to make them look like hidden lines. You go next. Now here you can choose. If you don't like these views, you can flip through and find. Remember, we're focusing on that front view. What's the best front view that I can give you? And it doesn't have to say front up here. This is pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that. Um, the other option would be this. I think I think that's a good, oops, that's a good view. Next, and here you can choose which views do you want. Front, a top, a right, and an ISO. Remember, that's the standard that everyone uses. Front, top, right, ISO. You don't just get to randomly decide, hey, I'm going to do a left and a bottom, unless you have a really good view. Uh, and then let's see, let's go back and see all the things we have here, right? So chose our part, hidden lines. Uh, if you don't, let's see here. Have to play with that. Choose your views, choose how it's laid out, say finish, and that's that. I was busy talking, I think I sort of missed a step. With the very first thing when you put it on there, you can choose the scale. I'll do a different one, but let's just, if you double click on this, you can get a lot of information here about the, um, the settings of how the drawing's laid out. If you go to this general tab, you can see settings. Uh, we can bump up the scale to one to two. Um, it's kind of small. I see what a one to five looks like. Oh, oops, wrong way. One to two, full scale. So yeah, I kind of blew it because I should have done that. In the beginning. I should let me do that. But anyway, I'm just double clicking on these guys. It's okay. Good practice. Okay. All right. So there, now one thing you'll notice is these views are really tied together like this, but you just have to deal with it. Okay. A couple things we'll see. Uh, one is you're showing hidden lines here. Let's double click on that and go to the hidden line thing and click uncheck where it says self hidden. And then it'll turn those off center line, delete those center lines. We typically don't show center lines. Okay, that looks pretty good. That line is really long. I don't know why that center line is so long. I'm going to just delete it. To put center lines and center marks, they're over here. Now again, I'm in this home tab. Right here would be a center mark. To 
put center lines, use this one that says 2D center line, and then just click on the two. Let's see, I gotta do something a little trickier on that one because there's two pieces. Stretch it out a little. I don't want it to be so crazy long. Maybe that's the easiest way to do that. Okay, I don't know, I still got, it's still kind of long there. I have to play with that. Um, what else? Um, I notice you have these tangent lines on here. You want to get rid of those. So if you double click on this, and it's called smooth edges, just turn that off. That'll get rid of the tangent lines. Double click, turn off the smooth edges. All right, still don't like this that much. Because that's a broken line. Yeah, I'm going to have to play with that. Okay, dimensionally, you're going to go up here. You can use the rapid dimension. It's kind of smart. It'll decide what you're doing, or you can force it to be linear, radial, angular, and so forth. There's some more stuff here you can use. Uh, rapid is kind of like the quick way to do it. Now, again, you're going to get stupid ISO dimensions. You know how much I love those, but you just go with it. Uh, you can actually go in and modify those. But I don't want to ha have to do that every single time I make a drawing to customize those. So we'll just, I'll just have to deal with that. Um, let's see. And just try to use good dimensioning practices as we always have. Now on these circles, you should be able to use that rapid, but a lot of times I find I just have to come up here and force it. And, and that's the way the ISO dimension is. That's just how it is. I don't like them, but that's what you get. Um, oops. <laughs> I got the edge there. Let's try that again. Oh, the other thing you'll notice, which you know that'll make me crazy, is that look at the extension lines. There's no gaps there. The good news is these lines are thicker than those. That's changeable, but you have to change it each time. Let me show you how to change some of those things. Um, if you go over here to File and go to Preferences, Drafting, that'll have all, the, like right here, you can change your extension line length if that's really bothering you. They should be both the same. So if I make that two, But unfortunately, it doesn't automatically update. Now let's do a new dimension and you'll see what I'm talking about. So that one has the gap there. So you have to catch it early, but that would set now from now on, they'll all have the, the proper extension line thing, right? The gap, but that's just, it's a silly amount of work because again, this is the student version. So we just have to deal with it. And let's see what else. So we just got a couple more, I think. Now again, proper view selection, proper dimensioning techniques, pay attention to all those things we've been doing previously. Now you notice when you go to put a dimension on, you see how this box pops up? If you want to put something in front of the dimension, you'd put it here. If you want to put something behind the dimension. So for example, on this one, I want that to be a 2x. And then you, oops, place your dimension and then close that, right? You can also, you can double click a dimension after it's in place and you can change things like you could change this, the way that it presents this diameter symbol. You can add tolerances to it and those kinds of things by double clicking. Okay, I think, I don't know, I probably have missed something, but I think mostly it's on there. Uh, let's go up here to note, we'll fill out the title block. Now that was the previous, good news is after you've made some more than one drawing, it'll, it'll bring that information. So if you just have to, 
you just have to edit it um, instead of making a whole new title block thing and close that. That'll fill up the title block. However, you save it, that'll show up there in the drawing number. So you gotta get used to that saving as drawing number things. And there we go. Now again, it won't let, if you try to print, it'll just print a big sheet of paper that says academic version. The other thing it won't let you do is it will not let you create a PDF. That's part of the student version. The full-blown industrial version will you try to do a save as it will only save it as a part file um, so i haven't been able to outsmart that anyway so what we're going to have to do is we'll export an image let's just do a png file uh, let's see and then save that Then what you can do is probably the easiest way is just use Word. Um, make sure that the layout is a landscape. And I'll need to open that. And I want to put this on the sheet of paper. So a couple of different ways to do it. Now, don't just, don't send me the PNG file. Okay. It's going to be too hard to grade because it's going to cut off. It's going to cut off all the, I mean, it's going to have all this extra room and it's going to be really hard to see. Right. So there's a couple of ways you can do that. Uh, one way is to use, uh, if you have Windows, you'll have something called Snip and Sketch. Click on that, say New. Just draw a window around this thing. Open up that Word doc and then just paste it in there. And then for then leave that thing open, make a new sheet. When you do your next drawing, paste that on there. Next drawing, do the same thing. Just paste and then you can save that as a PDF and send me. A, oops, don't have blanks. You can send me a PDF that's got all of those on there, right? So cut and paste it. Please don't just print screen and send me a print screen. Okay, it's too difficult to grade. I won't be able to see what you got on the sheet. All right, so that's the basics of how to use NX. Remember, you're always going to start on this screen, choose your unit, say okay, and then go from there.